influencer series is usually a conversation with one thought leader or person who is the driving force behind a trend that we're all talking about. Occupy Wall Street is an ongoing demonstration protesting against socioeconomic inequality and corporate greed. The movement is obviously larger than any one person. So today we'll be speaking with Micah White of Adbusters, the organization that initiated the first Occupy Wall Street meetup on September 17th in New York. Since that time, protests have popped up in every major city, over 80 across the country. Joining us live via Skype from Berkeley, California, to discuss the meaning and message behind Occupy Wall Street is senior editor at Adbusters, Micah White. Micah, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So give us some history. How is Adbusters involved with initiating the first demonstrations? Adbusters has been you know, publishing an international magazine for about 20 years that's been advocating for a citizen movement against the overwhelming power of corporations. And in July, we kind of put out a call to our network saying, you know, could this happen? Could we get 20,000 people to flood onto Wall Street, set up encampments, and basically protest the financial fraudsters who are who need to be brought to justice? Mm -hmm. And the the call was just responded to so enthusiastically that um, it just had every they organized themselves. Everyone in New <laughs> people in New York City kind of just took the idea and ran with it. What was the focus then, and has it changed now? No, this, the focus remains the same. The idea is to basically spark a people's democracy movement in America against the corporations who are both, you know, making us all poor and at the same time destroying our democracy by uh, corrupting our representatives with basically bribery uh, campaign donations. So well, the well, idea... Yeah. Go ahead. No, sorry. Continue. So the, basically the idea of Occupy Wall Street is to... Um, revive people's democracy and 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 exert control over the corporations. Well, what do you see as the practical outcome of these demonstrations? Will there be real impact? I know we're talking about all these bigger issues here, but what's the real impact you want to see? Of course there's real impact. There's already real impact. Yeah. As you said, there's people all over the country who are going to these occupations. So I think that anyone who's watching this show should go and find their local occupation at occupytogether.org and go and visit. Because I think that the point is to is to show people what real democracy looks like. And real democracy is um, these encampments. It's not the fake democracy of the market message testing, you know, mass media and, the, and, the, and their corporations. So already we're seeing a, a revival of the optimism that I think has been lacking in politics for the last decade. The idea that, wow, people can really um, spark some real democratic awakening in America. How long do you think this is going to last? Um, I'm indefinitely. I think that there's people in New York City who think that they can last through the winter, and I think that um, this is a movement that is just getting started. I think that this is a revolutionary movement that is going to topple the the, the corporate power structures in this country. I think that the the corporations have basically treated people as as their as their slaves in, in a certain sense, thinking that you know 99% of the population's only use is for the profit extraction. That people are merely uh, there to make 1% uh, of the population richer and richer. And I think that's going to end now. Um, I think that people are going to use this as an opportunity to spark a real revolutionary movement in America. Well, now, Arab Spring is mentioned on the Occupy Wall Street site. So where do you think the comparison is between the revolutions that took place in Egypt and Tunisia with what we're seeing right now? Well, the basic idea that we that we floated was to combine the the uh, the tactic of the Egyptian uprising, which was that they went to a place of symbolic importance, right? And then we combined that with the Spanish acampadas. And in 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 May, they the people of Spain all over the country formed together in these general assemblies. So we tried to combine the, those two tactics with Occupy Wall Street. We're having a, a people's encampment in Wall Street, a place of very important symbolic. Uh, importance and at the same time they're having these general assemblies that are open meetings that are that they vote on everything together they decide on everything using consensus based decision making and it's, it's it's people's democracy so i think what the comparison is is that we are sick of the corporate political parties deciding the uh, the agenda of america and we are starting to find our voice again as as citizens as people all right so now that celebrities are starting to get involved do you think that this 1% being involved will help or hurt the message of the 99%? I think that the um, Occupy Wall Street is a movement that will not be co-opted by the corporate forces. I think that anyone is free to join and help out, but at the same time, I think that there is a real reluctance to engage in that old-style party politics where 
we elect a leader, we, a leader. You know, ad buses is not the leader. There's no leader in Wall, Occupy Wall Street. There's no leader in Occupy Berkeley or Occupy San Francisco or any of the occupation movements around the country. This is a people's movement. This is a people's democratic movement. And so I think that, you know, anyone who tries to co-opt it is just merely going to be laughed at and, and heckled. There's no one who has the authority to speak for the occupation movement. It's a movement of people's democracy in the squares. Well, yeah, isn't, isn't that what people that are criticizing it about because there's no leader or main mm. voice or message or outcome or goal besides, oh, toppling, you know, corporate America. What does that really mean though? Yeah. What is the goal? <laughs> I think the goal is to institute economic justice. I think that, you know, for a long time, the left, if you look at, there's, you go into any library, there's countless books with ideas. We all have ideas. There's some really good ideas. I think some of the concrete goals that we're going to see come out of this are a, a transaction tax on international financial flows, where, where, where speculation is turned into a way to fund public services through a 1% Tobin tax or a Robin Hood tax. I think that we're going to see the reinstatement of the Glass-Steagall Act that, that limits the ability of commercial banks to engage in financial speculation. I think that we're going to see, um, hopefully, the revocation of corporate personhood. So these are all going to come about, but they are themselves not the primary goal. The primary goal is to reinstate the authority of people over democracy. I mean, de democracy means people, you know, pe the rule of the people. So I think that we're trying to return to that. Yeah. So, well, speaking of people, we had a few questions from Google+. Plus. Ed Norris asked, what advice would you give protesters and activists about making the biggest impact online? Well, I mean, I've been a, a trenchant critic of what I call clicktivism. I think that the, the, the Occupy Wall Street worked precisely because no one thought it would work. You know, we did not engage in that kind of online petition signing or any of that kind of stuff. We used Twitter hashtags and social networking to get the word out, but we then took a square. So I would tell people to go online, go to OccupyTogether.org, check out where your local occupation is, and then go there physically in person. It's, a, it's a really important to experience this in person in the real world. All right, we had another question from Michael Mozart, who wants to know, I've spent two recent days at Occupy Wall Street and my stream is filled with video and images. What points or demands do the protesters need to emphasize? I think that the demands can only come out of the General Assembly, which is meeting twice a day. It's a democratic assembly of consensus-based decision-making. So I think that it's not up to um, a leadership or a particular organization to float what the idea should be. I think that Adbusters has been continuously advocating for a Tobin tax on financial flows, reinstatement of the Glass-Steagall Act, so basically slow down fast money. We need to put, we need to take the bankers and limit their power. But I think that it's up to the General Assembly of each different occupation to decide what their specific demand will be. And I think that that we that this is the new model. There's no leaders. There's no organizations. We we decide together. Would that well, who's the General Assembly? Who's elected them? And wouldn't if there's no leaders, wouldn't, wouldn't there be chaos? <laughs> well, there has been no chaos. That's what's amazing about Occupy Wall Street is it's been completely nonviolent. There's been no property damage, no violence whatsoever on the part of the protesters. The General Assembly is an open meeting of everyone at the occupation. So you go to these occupations and there's a General Assembly meeting that's open and they use consensus-based decision making. And there's facilitators who rotate um, and who basically he lead this discussion. It's a really fascinating experience because if you think about it, how do you have a discussion with 300 people about what should be done, right? Mm. It's very difficult. When's the last time we ever did that? And they're discovering how to do that. They're having discussions with 500 people at a time having consensus-based decision-making about what they should do. Mm -hmm. Finally, how, what do you say to those criticizing the movement? Because there are those people out there, as, mu as much as you do have supporters, that there's no real or clear solution to come out of this, and it's just a bunch of uh, unemployed people, you know, protesting. Well, I would say, look, let's be honest. What's going on here is we have started a revolutionary movement in this country. Yeah. And this revolutionary movement is not going to stop. This revolutionary movement is a people's power, people powered movement for democracy. Mm -hmm. So they can laugh and scoff, but you know what? This is like, this is not ending. This is going on indefinitely. This is a revolutionary movement. And I think that it's time for people to throw away their cynicism. This is a revolutionary movement of the 99% across political boundaries. This is not a left issue or a right mm -hmm. issue. This is about the fact that the vast majority of Americans are suffering under the heel of 400 wealthy people, essentially, who suck up all the capital and use it to exploit everyone else. It's, it's, it's something that we can all get behind. All right. Well, Micah, thank you so much for sharing your insights today and being our guest. I appreciate it. No problem. And of course, if you want to find out more about Occupy Wall Street, a good place to start is OccupyWallStreets.org and OccupyTogether.org.